IT technical support. This is Greg. Can I have your employee ID, please? Okay, thank you so much. How can I help you out today? Oh, you need a password reset. Okay, no problem. Let me go ahead and take that care of that for you. Okay, your password should be all reset. Is there anything else I can help you out with today? No, you're all good? Okay, have a great day. Thank you. Uh, oh, boy. Help desk support. It's how I started my tech career, but I knew it wasn't how I wanted to end my tech career. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my journey of how I started on the help desk and how I would eventually become an AWS solutions architect. That little opening sequence that I just took you through, that was literally my real life on my first job. And the truth is 15 years would pass by from when I started my help, first help desk job to when I became an AWS solutions architect. But I'm gonna give you all the insight that I learned. So hopefully you can do a lot faster than I did. So on the help desk, it was tier one and I supported business applications. We had to kind of read from scripts and we had knowledge bases. And when I first started that job, I got to shadow more experienced help desk agent. Now, don't get me wrong. I learned a ton, but what I didn't like about the help desk, especially tier one help desk, is that it didn't have a really high degree of autonomy in the sense that you can go and do things on your own. Everything was kind of descriptive. All the solutions were in a knowledge base. And if anything required you to kind of use your your brain beyond what was scripted, now you had to route a ticket up to tier two or tier three engineers. And I knew that's not how I wanted my career to play out long-term. So I had to think about what it is I needed to do. Now, a lot of you watching this video might be on a help desk right now and you feel stuck. When you're on help desk, it's very common to feel stuck in that environment because it's comfortable, things become very familiar, and you know what, let's face it, like when you're comfortable with something, you don't want to get uncomfortable to go do the things you need to do to bump up to the next level. But you have to ask yourself, are you really happy being on that help desk? And if not, it's time to do something. And you watching this video right now is the first step. When I had established that I didn't want to be on the help desk forever, I knew I had to come up with some sort of action plan. And my only way to bump up to the next level was the fact I was gonna to need to learn. And when I say learn, I mean learn new skills. In your case, you really wanna start focusing on AWS cloud skills so you can get yourself elevated to the next level. Now with you working on help desk, you already have a lot of great skills. You know some basic troubleshooting and you have the soft skills of customer service in being able to interact with employees. This is gonna help you big time as you move over into AWS Cloud because that great troubleshooting background and being able to communicate with customers and staff is gonna serve you well. Now, let me walk you through some of the jobs I had starting with that help desk all the way leading up to AWS. So after I did the help desk job, which was mostly phones, then I migrated to a project to where I was doing essentially upgrading Windows workstations on a contract across the country. I had jobs in desktop support, network administrator, network operations center analyst, system administrator, network engineer, consulting, and then finally, AWS solutions architect. Now, I'm not saying you have to do all those jobs in between before you go after becoming an AWS solutions architect. I'm sure you can probably do it a lot faster. Now, when I went into that help desk job, I had already worked on my CompTIA A plus certification. So this gave me like a lot of background in hardware from a client perspective and software and troubleshooting, those types of things. So what I would say for you is really assess where your tech background is. And if you feel as though it's good, then I'm gonna suggest you start working towards AWS certification and skills. But if it's not, we might wanna take a little bit of a step back to figure out what it is we need to do to beef up. Now, I like to mix in a few CompTIA certifications because they're great certifications to help you build fundamental technical skills. 
again, you have your CompTIA A+, which is software and hardware predominantly. Then CompTIA Network+, Plus, which teaches you all the fundamentals around networking because remember, cloud is all connected by the internet and networking is very huge. So that gave you some great fundamentals. And then CompTIA Security+, Plus, because security is a top priority of building and supporting any system. So I would say those three CompTIA certifications would serve you well. But again, it's not just going out here and collecting a bunch of certifications. It's really understanding the knowledge that is within those certifications that is going to get you to the next level. To get you started on AWS, you want to start off with the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. This is a fundamental AWS certification which requires no technical background. That's gonna teach you all the fundamentals about AWS to set you up for success as you build up on those follow-on certifications and those hands-on skills. After you've successfully passed your AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner, then that's what I want you to look at your AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate. This is largely based on the AWS World Architect Framework, and this is gonna teach you how to build secure, cost-optimized, operationally excellent, reliable, perform efficiency, and sustainable applications in the cloud. While you're working on that AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate, I wanna make sure that you are further cementing those theoretical concepts by actually building things. And that's why I want you to take a look at AWS Skill Builder as well specifically the AWS Skill Builder Builder Labs. These are hands-on labs that you can do in a real live AWS account, and there's over 100 labs you can choose from. Now, I know I talked about a lot of stuff in this video, but there's one important point that I wanna leave you with. If you're not satisfied in that tech position you're in now, know that there's something better out there for you. And the first step is to simply take the action to make it to the next level. Now, no one said it's gonna be easy, but I believe that you can do it. Just take it one day at a time. Definitely leave me some feedback in the comments, ask your questions. I'm happy to respond to your comment and give you some more guidance and direction. And please let me know what videos you'd like to see in the future. I'm happy to expand on any of the topics I mentioned in this video. And definitely, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.